You've tuned into another edition of The Break Room, a weekly conversation about how the city of St. Augustine works from those who do the work every day. Hosted by the city of St. Augustine's communications director, Melissa Whistle, The Break Room offers a closer look at the different city departments and provides updates on current and upcoming projects and events. And now your host, Melissa Whistle. Welcome to The Break Room. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Melissa Whistle, communications director for the city of St. Augustine. And I have Xavier Pellis here with me this week. He's the mobility coordinator for the city. And we are going to talk about the 28th annual Nights of Light season and Light Up Night. Welcome. All right. Well, thanks. <laughs> so, X, you are our mobility coordinator. We're going to talk first about all things mobility. Oh, mobility manager now. Mobility Ru- manager. Ru- Ru- Ruben promoted me up to mobility manager. Ru- Ruben moved uh, from mobility manager, and then he got promoted to director of public works. So that okay. was a, that was a big move for Ruben. Okay, I and, apologize. Uh, and, then, and then Ruben basically plugged me in where he used to be. Excellent. I take that back. Our mobility manager. There you go. Thank you, X. But let's talk about mobility. It's kind of been a quiet subject over the past 18 months or so because we haven't been able to be mobile and be around groups of people on buses. Well, about a year and a half or so ago when this this COVID thing first came out, I got to tell you, it was kind of eerie Mm. around uh, downtown St. Augustine because there was no cars parked on the streets. Uh, Didn't have any problem with parking. Didn't have any parking issues. But, uh, I mean, there were like, one or two cars parked mm-hmm. where there might be normally, you know, the whole street would be loaded right. up and, and you couldn't find a parking spot. And I, I can remember leaving work around 5, 530 one day and I came out on Cordova and, and looked down King Street. And as far as I could see down King Street towards the west, and as far as I could see down King Street to the east. There was no cars no driving, cars. and it that was just weird feeling. Yeah, that was back in what April, mm-hmm. not this past April, but right. the April before. So now, but uh, I tell you, um, it started back in around uh, November, uh, okay. a year ago, November, um, and uh, for that November and December, um, people thought we were still in a pandemic. Well, let me tell you, with the with the volume of people that were in downtown St. Augustine, our parking garage had record numbers for the number of cars parking in the parking garage for November and December. And we, we blew away anything from the past. And so, uh, as of about a year ago, we've been very busy as far as people and Mm -hmm. cars in St. Augustine. And we had to cancel one of the biggest things initially, when you're talking about the start of COVID, the biggest thing initially was our festivals in that spring right. and, the, and the shuttles. So there was none of that. So, yeah, we haven't, the, had any, haven't had any shuttles for the, uh, well, since um, the first time we started up the shuttles were for the Rhythm and Ribs mm-hmm. was what, back in October. Right. And uh, so that was our first shuttle for the past two years. Crazy. And last year we did have light up night. But it wasn't really a light up night. We just kind of turned the lights on right. and and no shuttles, no event, right. no celebration. Well, we weren't supposed to be having right. large gatherings right. of people, so they tried to space things mm-hmm. out, not really have a, a, an event where it was drawing everybody right. at one time. So they tried to space out. They even started nights of lights actually a week or so earlier right. than normal, just to try to spread it out a little bit. But I tell you, the people were coming. People were coming. Uh, it was still a crowd of people. It was crazy. There were so many people down there. It was like there. And, and then back at that time, I'd guess maybe 50-50 as far as wearing masks and things right. like that. But there was just the people were out. They and were out and about. This year, we're going to bring it back. Yeah. Well, and, and it started really, you know, when you talk about the pent up pandemic mm-hmm. feeling and everything and people were coming out. But it's um, I, it's, I've strongly feel that we're going to be busier than ever for this upcoming uh, Nights of Nights Light, Light season. And our our kickoff, our our event is Light Up Night, which is on November 20th. It's right. a Saturday. It's a yeah. Saturday before Thanksgiving. And that's when we start our shuttles. Yes. Back back to business as usual. Tell me where our back, locations back to, are. Back to business as usual. Um, well, our, it's our normal locations, but this year we're adding a, a, adding a location. So our normal locations are um, on on I kind of call it a north and a east and a west. Okay. It, we got three different loops running this year, so our normal north loop is uh, the 301 San Marco lot, which is a grass lot up on the north end of San Marco Avenue, and then we also utilize the St. Johns County's uh, couple of lots. It's the St. Johns County Health Department, and then also the St. Johns County's Administration Building. So those three parking lots. And then we're we're bringing uh, the people into the visitor information center parking garage vicinity, 
And so that's our North Loop. Uh, we also, and that's our normal North Loop. We did it two years ago. We didn't we didn't have any shuttles running last year, but two years ago, and then also two years ago, we we have our normal East Loop, which is Anastasia Island or Anastasia Boulevard, and we normally make use of the uh, Anastasia Baptist Church. They're very good. They let us come in and utilize their parking lot. They even open up their doors for nice bathrooms, nice. And, and they they provide water to the people that are in line. So. The, that is by far our busiest parking lot over there on, on the Anastasia Island side. We also make use of the amphitheater uh, and uh, the R.B. Hunt School. Now, uh, a couple of years ago, there was an event going on at the amphitheater, and then they make use of the R.B. Hunt School, so we weren't able to use those two. We still had the church lot, but uh, we, two years ago, we, we, for the first time, made use of the uh, – Saint, city of St. Augustine Beach, uh, City Hall. Okay. So that was the first time. That was an experiment, and there was a lot of people there. This year, we, we do have the amphitheater and the Arby Hunt School available to us, so we're not going to make use of okay. the uh, St. Augustine Beach this year um, because we've got our normal three right. lots. And, and really, it's we try to get people to park in as close as they can. And then also for our shuttle buses going back and forth, it's, it's more efficient to run right. them from, from closer in. So that's our that's our East Loop, if you will, and that's and, only on light up night. And that's only on light only up on night, light yeah. up night. I want to make sure folks know that because we don't want people coming later in December, right. Thanksgiving weekend, looking for parking at the amp or the church or the school. And thanks for reminding <laughs> yeah, me about yeah. that. That that is only on light up okay. night. That that first Saturday. Great. And then, uh, but this year we're going to try something a little new, a little different. Uh, the uh, we call it the Browdies lot. It's at the intersection of US One at King Street. And it's uh, the Browdy store. He he owns all the property back mm-hmm. in there, and so we've worked out an agreement with uh, with um, with Barry Browdy, mm-hmm. and uh, and so we're we're going to use that lot, and we're going to shuttle them from from that. It's a gra- It's a combination of a part asphalt, but it's mostly grass. It's okay. a mostly grass lot, and then we'll shuttle them from there to the parking garage visitor information center vicinity. And, and so we- that that loop will go back and forth between those two sites. We had used the Browdy lot several years ago, once for Fourth of July, if folks are tuning in and listening. And we did not actually do a, a, a shuttle. It was a walking experiment. But I'm really glad to hear that not only are we bringing that lot back into the circulation, but that we're all also able to provide the shuttle. Right. And and like you say, the experiment, that right. was a good word, because five years ago we, we used it, and it was for parking only. Uh, and and then people could walk. It's only one mile. It's mm-hmm. one mile from that lot all the way to the bayfront, and um, lots so, of cool stuff to see along the way. Yeah, but, walking along King Street, yeah. and 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 so um, and and basically the walkers, you're almost going as fast as the traffic is right. driving along <laughs> King Street because there's so many people that are wanting to drive and gawk, but then that's that's what drop that's what creates the congestion. Right. And that and that congestion is going to be there. There's not a whole lot we can do about it because no matter what we try to do, the people they're going to try to drive and and go in there, and and that's what they like to do. And uh, but but as far as a place, people say there's no place to park because well the, the the ideal place is the parking garage. Sure. But we have so many people coming at us that the parking garage fills up, and then there really is no place to park in the downtown core. And so, so we've created this philosophy that started about five years ago, mm-hmm. back in 2016, where satellite parking. And so you're parking kind of out on the edges, out on the perimeter, and then we shuttled again. And so that's uh, so we'll we'll see how it goes. I tell you, it's been building each year since mm-hmm. 2016 is when we started it, and uh, each year it has shown uh, growth. I mean, it's it's People showing good using growth. It. About each year, it's growing 10, 15, 20 percent. Well, and, and like you said, it's it's a matter of, yes, people want to come in and try to find a place, but boy, if, if you've got a free shuttle, and that's the other thing, it's just free, free, and free, and, free. And it's free parking. Free parking, so you, free so shuttle. If you go to the parking garage, you, you pay $15, or if you have a Park Now card, it's $3. So, but you you pay, and and that's a that's a great place to park. I, I, that's perfect. no doubt. But it, it, we have so many people that it does fill up, and then that's our biggest complaint is there's no place to park. So so we do have parking, and it's at this it's at the shuttling locations, and it's free. So right. you park for free, you get on a free shuttle, and you come in. Now the shuttles do use the same roads, so they get caught up in the congestion a little bit also, but. 
you as the driver, you have no worries. You're right. sitting there with your your family or your friends, and you're chatting and you're having a good time, and you could care less about traffic because the driver's doing all that for you. And and then, and it, it you know it takes ten fifteen minutes or so to fight through the traffic, but it it takes. 10, 15, 20 minutes to fight through the traffic if you're driving your own right. car. And then the and then what really would make you mad is if you drive your own car all the way down there and find out that there's no place to park. And the, and that, actually let me touch on that for just mm-hmm. a minute, sure. if you would, Melissa. We're we we're trying to create a um a message so that once the uh, parking garage does fill up, we get that message out. So we've just very recently put up some signs, and uh, and they're close. To, this is a phasing thing. So okay. we'll have our first phase. We've got three signs that are kind of close to the parking garage vicinity, and they're dynamic messaging signs where as each car comes in and as each car goes out, that digital change. So okay. there's 999 and one car left. There's 998, and so so that message is, is being shown. And then once it gets up to capacity, it'll it'll say closed. Okay. And so so this is all you know computerized and everything. So what we want to try to do is get it so that once we close it, um, that message will get out to say everybody has their phones, their mobile phones right. nowadays, and so uh, they can very they can check it when they're when they're driving in towards the city. And if they're wondering where they're going to park, they can see, oh, well, they're still parking at the parking garage if they so choose to go there. But they can also see, oh, the parking garage is getting ready to fill up or it's closed. Right. So let's not even bother to try to go down there. Let's just go ahead and drive straight to the to, the, to one of these satellite right. parking lots that I was talking about. Right. So it, it makes it more efficient. It makes it easier. And that's, that's what we're after. And that's what everybody's desiring and that's what everybody's pushing us to do is is make it easier tell me where to go park and tell me where the most convenient place to park is right help me find a place to park and we're going to give you a bunch of parking lots and so we're getting there Uh, there. this it's going to kick in probably in a couple of months it's for whatever reason it's dragging a little bit but it'll it'll we'll get it working we're getting there so for light up night in particular just to recap we've got parking on anastasia island we have the regular parking, which is throughout Nights of Lights, at least for the month of December. We'll come back to that quick before we run out of time. Right. But you've got 301 San Marco, uh, which is on the north side of the city. You've got the health department up there off of uh, US-1, just north of the city. And now the Browdy's lot, which we're referring to, which is there on the corner of King West King and US-1, right. all being shuttled to the VIC. Let me just make sure we're clear. The island shuttle does not go to the VIC. It only goes as far as just east of the bridge because we're not about to put those shuttles into the traffic. Right. So you will have to walk across the bridge. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that, yeah, too, because yeah. some people think that we're, we're shuttling them from the Anastasia Baptist Church and we're coming all the way across the bridge. We're not. Right. That We're shuttling them to the east side of the Bridge of Lions. And then we're dropping them off there because the traffic's just too hard to get right. across the bridge. And yes. drop off and pick up is the same. So if we drop you at the side of the bridge, that's where you're going to walk back to. And it's just rotating. It's not really yeah. a schedule right. other than it, the hours of operation. Let's talk that quick. The, the, the bow, Well, the buses are continually running. And so normally you're not standing in line but for five or ten minutes. Now, there is a chance where if we if we get real real busy, you know, you might have to wait fifteen or twenty minutes for a bus. But but normally we've we've got enough buses running and and they're efficient enough to where within about five or ten minutes there's a bus picking you up, and and so and then the hours of operation are uh, we're starting from one p.m. Now a couple of years ago we started at eight o'clock in the morning because we were doing an experiment to see how many, but there, we just didn't get very many people at right. all that early in the morning. So we're going to start at one o'clock. Um, that'll be our now. That's our startup time for our North Loop and our West Loop. The Anastasia Island uh, or Anastasia Boulevard that'll start at four. Okay. And then and then all three uh, all all of them will run until eleven o'clock. Okay. And believe it or not, we are out of time. We have right. a lot of information about Light Up Night and our parking free and free park and ride shuttle. Uh, throughout the month of December, and there are some different hours. Uh, we've got an earlier shuttle. You mentioned the earlier shuttle. We did. Do, we are going to do an earlier shuttle um, on December fourth for the Christmas parade. Right. And then um, we've got some other operating hours between Christmas and New Year's and Thanksgiving. So, uh, with our 
time running out, I ask all of our listeners to check out citysaynog.com. There's going to be a button right there on the home page that'll point you right to Light Up Night and our information about the park and ride shuttle. Yep. Very good, Melissa. We did it. <laughs> Thanks right. again for coming down and talking to me today, X. This is great. I'm really excited about our, our it, season. It, it's always a pleasure to be here. We'll have you back again. If you're just now tuning in, you have been listening to The Break Room. You can catch this interview and all of our past interviews online at citysaynogradio.com. Just remember that in order to stay connected, you need to be connected. So be sure to follow us on our social media platforms. You'll find us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at City Zaynog. Thanks for tuning in. Until next time. You've been listening to The Break Room, a weekly program addressing projects and programs offered by the City of St. Augustine. Join us each week as the City's Communications Director, Melissa Whistle, has in-depth conversations with the people who make our town work to meet the needs of our community. The Break Room is produced by Communications Specialist for the City of St. Augustine, Cindy Walker. See you at this time next week for another edition of The Break Room.